Hello everyone, I'm Jim Rodwell and I'm with the Friends of Matanzas Pass Preserve. I'm going to be your tour guide today. So, let's go on in and see what we find in the preserve. Okay everyone, right now we're in a maritime hammock. The maritime hammocks are rather unique to barrier islands. They occupy the highest point on the islands. Right now we're five to six feet above mean tide level here on the beach and the water table, which is salt water, is about three to four feet below us. Now this particular hammock sustains itself because it's a watershed. It collects fresh water and it rained last night uh, and it collects it and it holds it as a narrow thin layer of water on top of the salt water in the water table and that's how all this vegetation here survives. It has to have fresh water to survive. Even though many of these plants and trees in here are salt tolerant, we still need to have fresh water. Also, it feeds itself in here and it does so by using its own waste products. These dead leaves, dead branches and so forth. These break down by insects, birds, and other things, and finally they break down and they go into a very, very fine and very dark soil. Right here. You see it's very wet, very dark. Uh, all kinds of amoebas and protozoa, funguses, bacteria are working away in there. There may be several billion life forms in there working away. Uh, we think this island is about 3,000 years old, so we're probably looking at about 30 centuries of carbonaceous material here. Uh, all this organic material is being broken down to inorganic material and is taken up in the root system of the plants here as nutrients. And that's how they survive in the hammock here. So let's take a look here and see what we got. Oh, be a little bit careful here. We have a lot of roots here on the pathway, so watch your step. Now, first thing I want to point out, this is Taxiodendron radicans, or poison ivy, okay? See the three leaves? Remember, if there's three, leave it be. So please do not go off the trail and run into this stuff. Stay on the trail. Uh, here's something else I want to show you. This is a cat claw tree. It has two leaves on it, uh, opposite one another. And if you run your finger up here very, very carefully, you'll feel little thorns. That's how it got its name as a cat claw tree. When it blossoms, it has like a little powder puff flower that blows away into the wind. But when it does this, it has a beautiful fragrance. Uh, something like uh, orange blossoms. Now let's see what else we can find in here. Oh, here we go. This is a sable palmetto right here, or a cabbage palm. It is the um, state tree of the uh, state of Florida. Uh, it has these appendages on the, uh, on the, the trunk here, which are caused by when the fronds break off and fall to the ground, you leave these appendages stuck out like here. And they're often referred to as boots. Now, the story goes that boots got its name because you could use them to um, Take your boots off. Oh, so the story goes. What else? Ah, over here. This is a Quercus virginiana, right here, or a live oak. Uh, you can see it has a, a very, very short trunk, and you can also tell it, uh, it has these deep furrows in the bark, and the branches you see come out at oblong angles, which makes a very for a very wide canopy. It makes it a great shade tree. It's also very, very strong. We could probably walk out up here on this branch right out here and sit. Three or four people up here. That's, that's how strong it is. Now let's see what else we got here. We'll find something else. We have a bench here if you care to rest. Here's an interesting plant right here. 
right down here, growing all around in here. This is snowberry. It's a, it's a vine, and it's a great ground cover. Uh, it has a, a little white berry. Um, that if you take the berry into your hand and you move it around like the finger, it'll actually melt. So that's how it got its name, Snowberry. All right, here we go. We have this little fern right here. Uh, ferns are not. Uh, don't have fruit or seeds, they have spores on the back of the leaf and they, they're wind blown. And what they do is they land in the furrows of this live oak here and they start growing. Uh, typically, most of the time when it's not raining, there's no moisture at all, this plant looks like it's dead. And it just, just curls up and it becomes brown. Uh, well, it rained last night, actually just a, several hours ago, and what happens when it rains, it, it comes back to life. It's a nice emerald green color like that. That's why it's called resurrection fern. Yeah, here we go. This one right here is a white stopper. Uh, when it's very hot and very humid, uh, the bark of this tree here will pass out a, an odor. It smells something like a skunk. Um, but it got its name because a stopper because of its seed. Uh, there's a little black seed that co comes with this uh, tree. And the pioneers would take that tea, grind it up, make a tea out of it. And it was very effective against uh, diarrhea. So that's how it's got its name as a stopper. Over here, we use what we call a strangler fig that uh, has a very large leaf on it. You can see the large leaf right there. So that is a ficus aurora or a Florida strangler. So it is native to Florida. And it, uh, it started growing when a mockingbird probably got a fig down here in the ground, ate the seed. He flew up there and landed in the boot of one of these cabbage palms and uh, dropped the seed and the, the fig started growing from up there and it started putting down these ruts. Eventually it will be, this uh, cabbage palm will be completely encased in uh, the fig tree and eventually it'll kill the tree. Now we'll move on. Oh, here's another fern growing in the boot of a cabbage palm. Uh, as I said before, ferns are spore bearing. And if you can get up under here and take a look, you'll see the spores right along the side of that, and those stems there and underneath the leaf. And they'll blow off and they'll land right back into these boots here and they'll start growing. Uh, this sometimes is referred to as cabbage fern or rabbit's foot fern. You see here is the root system right in here. It's a very soft gold color. So sometimes it's called rabbit foot fern. And down here, at the bottom, we have shoestring fern. Shoestring fern. Okay. Uh, here's another little resident of the, of the hammock. This is Cytoxylon celesternium. Uh, also known as saffron plum. It has some very, very sharp thorns on it. And sometimes it's referred to by a common name called buckthorn. Be careful touching that. And right here, a little plant right here with a little white flower at the tip. This is called scorpion tail. And we are now leaving the Maritime Hammock, and we're going into the Tidal Swamp. But before we go into the Tidal Swamp here and go up on the boardwalk, I want to caution you to be careful, because oftentimes this boardwalk has a lot of leaves on it, it gets wet, and it can be slippery. So be very, very careful coming up into here.